Translation. Yeah. He who brought the treasure of divine love to Jesus. Excuse me. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy. Where is such a personality of Sri Vasacharya gone? Where am I Srip Dhamma and Dr. Swam? Where is Sanatana? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the Paul? Where am I Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kavirath? Where did Lord Varunga, the great dancer, send me? I will smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. Where will I find Lord Varunga, the reservoir of all wonderful followers? Be not able to take the mercy, be not able to obtain association with Lord Varunga. Accompanied by all these devotees, whose association he performed his pastime, nor to God send the peace. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I, I asked Bala to give class today, and unknowingly, I, last night I wasn't aware it was the um, disappearance day of uh, Jagannath Das Babaji, and appearance day of Rastakananda. Disappearance. disappearance day. So, on that note, it's, um, it's our great pleasure. Bala's our favorite. Uh, Pravachan Sevaka for speaking on the Acharyas. My son actually says this is the best. <laughs> so uh, we're very happy to have him share with us today the glories of Acharyas. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 18, titled Prithu Maharaj Milks the Earth Planet, and we're in text 21. Yaksha Rakshansi Bhutani Vishacha Vishita Shanaha Vishacha Vatsa Duduhu Kapale Kshata Jasavam Yaksha Rakshansi Bhutani Yaksha Rakshansi Bhutani Vishacha Vishita Shanaha Yaksha Rakshansi Bhutani Vishacha Pishita Shanaha Bhutesha Vatsa Duduhu Kapale Kshata Jasavam Kapale Kshata Jasavam Text 21 yeah. <laughs> Synonyms Yaksha, Yaksha. the Yakshas, Yakshas, the descendants of Kubera, the descendants of Rakshansi, the Rakshasas, meat eaters, Bhutani, ghosts, Pisachaha, witches, Pishita Asanaha, who are all habituated to eating flesh, Bhutesha, Lord Shiva's incarnation, Rudra. Vatsaha, whose calf, calf. Duduhu, Duduhu, milked out, milked out. Kapale, Kapale, in a pot of skulls, Kshataja, blood, blood. Asavam, Asavam, a fermented beverage. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Translation, then the yakshas, rakshasas, ghosts, and witches, who are habituated to eating flesh, transformed Lord Shiva's incarnation, Rudra, Bhutana, into a calf and milked out beverages made of blood and put them in a pot made of skulls. Purport. There are some types of living entities in the form of human beings whose living conditions and eatables are most abominable. 
Generally, they eat flesh and fermented blood, which is mentioned in this verse as kshata jasavam. The leaders of such degraded men known as yakshas, rakshasas, bhutas, and pisachas are all in the mode of ignorance. They have been placed under the control of Rudra. Rudra is the incarnation of Lord Shiva and is in charge of the mode of ignorance and material nature. Another name of Lord Shiva is Bhutanat, meaning master of ghosts. Rudra was born from between Brahma's eyes when Brahma was very angry at the four commands. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kananjana Shavakaya Chakshura Nilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manopishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kidamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vanchakalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaurura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First beg the blessings of the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis that I may be able to speak properly and our Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta philosophical conclusions given by our predecessor Acharyas and be able to speak properly on today's verse and dive into the glories of our great Acharyas. <coughs> today's verse is speaking about how the Yakshas, Rakshasas, ghosts and witches transformed Rudra Bhutanat into a calf and milked out beverages made of blood and put them in a pot made of skulls. So yakshas are most of the time quite devilish personalities. We hear about how they're kind of lower grade demigods that are descendants of Kuvera. So very Famous yakshas, Managriva, Nalakuvara, who we hear about in the Dhammadarashtakam, in the Dhammadharma, and how we heard previously how Dhruva Maharaj went to battle with them because they killed his brother. And they're seen as kind of nature spirits. So you could kind of think like fairies or different nature spirits like that who might be a little bit evil-minded. Rakshasas, here it says meat eaters. Uh, Shri the Prabhupada would often say Rakshasas are man eaters. Thinking about Ravana, Kumbhakarna, these great Rakshasas. That Rakshasas, they're actually on the level of demigods, but they're evil. And they actually love eating the flesh of Brahmins. Why? Because <laughs> Brahmins are pure, so they like pure <laughs> pure meat, <laughs> pure flesh. And the Bhutas, ghosts, pisachas, witches, Bhutas and Pretas. If you want to learn a lot about ghosts, read Garuda Purana, which is uh, speaks about not only Yamaraj's abode and the different residence, uh, residential places of uh, you know, the Yamadutas and the hellish planets, but it also goes into detail about what Bhutas and Pretas look like. And we can think about how kind of our material life in this world on earth and this material body is kind of full of suffering. Yesterday I went to the dentist and it was full of suffering, <laughs> but the Bhutas and Pretas, their life is just complete suffering. And Garuda Purana talks about how some of them, they have a very large belly 
but their mouth is like a pinhole. And so they're constantly hungry. And it actually talks about the forms in Garuda Purana. Some of them have tails and some of them are attracted to different places. Right? We hear about how some ghosts are so attached to their homes that they, they're, they're actually stuck in a particular house or in a particular place. We hear about Shri Bhakti Manod Thakur. In one place, there was this ghost that was trapped in a tree and different personalities were coming, trying to chant the holy names to get this ghost out. But the ghost wouldn't leave because he was a Brahma Rakshasa. He was actually a Brahmin in his previous life. And so actually only Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who's pure devotee, his Shudanam, his pure chanting actually uh, broke the tree and the ghost left. And uh, yeah, so Garuda Prana, Purana talks a lot about ghosts and then also how they transform. It's a very kind of, seems like either somehow the Tibetan Book of the Dead took a lot from the Garuda Purana. So if anybody's read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, it's very much similar. And then there's witches, Pishachas, and the most famous witch that we know, Putana. And how Shri Prabhupada actually talks about how there are still witches in India that actually will take uprooted trees, small trees, and ride them around. Actually, when you when we hear about uh, Putana, one of it says Kechari. So K is another term for ether, and so Chari means to move around. So she was actually able to move around in the, in the air and the ether. And so witches have these particular powers to perform these black arts. Right in uh, India, it's called Tantra. There's one uh, devotee, Shri Prabhupada disciple named Atmatattva Prabhu. He, he used to go to LA a lot and uh, he, he used to have his writings published on the internet. I believe it's still there. I think he has uh, uh, his own webpage, but he was actually into tantric black magic before he met Srila Prabhupada. And he has all these crazy stories about going into cemeteries with this other tantric practitioner and, you know, performing really, uh, really wild tantric practices don't go into here go into here so much but if you look up Atma Tattva Prabhu a lot of his stories are there he met even one lady she was so old and decrepit that she actually had to get around using ghosts to like hold her body up really far out uh, stories that are there and uh, so yeah, in, in India, and Shri Prabhupada in the purport to 925, Yanti Deva, Vrta Deva, uh, Bhutani, Yanti Bhutedra, those who are still, they worship ghosts, they'll attain the planet of the ghosts. And in the purport, Shri Prabhupada talks about this black magic and how people think it's a type of spiritualism, but it's actually, it's actually gross materialism. And those who practice tantra magic, they can tell you that there can be dire consequences. You're actually basically selling yourself to these personalities. And it's quite sad to see that there's a resurgence in America. Um, there are certain personalities that are trying to spread tantra, demoniac black magic and uh, some young people are, are picking it up and being led into a life that could be very dangerous, you know, dealing with this type of, type of uh, worship. And these personalities, they're habituated to eating flesh. They transformed Rudra into a calf. So Sadashiva is the 
original Lord Shiva. And Sadashiva comes in the form of Advaita Acharya, Prabhu mixed with Mahavishnu. And Sadashiva incarnates in this world as Gun Avatar Shiva. And then Rudra is a further incarnation of Lord Shiva that comes from Lord Brahma's eyes. So Rudra is a kind of Sanskrit term that in, in certain ways means anger, right? In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we hear about Raudra, which is anger. So Rudra and Raudra, uh, you can say how Rudra is an incarnation of anger and he's born between Brahma's eyes. So when Brahma was performing the task of creating, he had four sons, the four Kumars, who were topmost jnanis, and they didn't want to engage in any form of householder life. They took the forms of five-year-old children, Kumars, and they wanted to stay that way and not get married. And this angered Brahma so much that Rudra came out between his eyes. And a uh, very beautiful BBT painting that's there. It's uh, showing little baby Rudra coming out of Brahma. And in, uh, I think it's actually in this, 422, um, it talks about how, oh uh, yeah, Lord Shiva, the spiritual master of the entire world, is free from enmity, is a peaceful personality, and is always satisfied in, him, in himself. And he is the greatest among the demigods. How is it possible that Daksha could be inimical towards such an auspicious personality. The purport, so the Prabhupada states, Lord Shiva is described here as Chara Chara Guru, the spiritual master of all animate and inanimate objects. He is sometimes known as Bhutanat, which means the worshipful deity of the dull headed. <laughs> Bhuta is also sometimes taken to ind indicate the ghosts. Lord Shiva takes charge of reforming persons who are ghosts and demons, not to speak of others who are godly. Therefore, he is the spiritual master of everyone, both the dull and demoniac and the highly learned Vaishnavas. It is also stated, Vaishnavanam yata Shambhu. Shambhu, Lord Shiva, is the greatest of all Vaishnavas. On one hand, he is the worshipable object of the dull demons, and on the other, he is the best of all Vaishnavas or devotees. So, a very important point to connect to today's verse in purport that why is it they're following Lord Rudra? It's because Bhutanat, Lord Shiva, he's going to ultimately reform them, which is amazing to think about how merciful Lord Shiva is, is that even though he's the in charge of the mode of ignorance in material nature, he is not under the mode of ignorance. He is Vaishnavanam Yuta Shambhu. And Lord Shiva, he's actually going to reform all of these yakshas, rakshasas, ghosts, and witches. We see how even some of them, they worship him like Ravana worshiped Lord Shiva. And ultimately Ravana, he was killed by Lord Ram. So even though they worship Lord Shiva, uh, sometimes they're reformed by even being killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And very famous pastime in Krishna book, where Vrikasura, he tries to kill Lord Shiva, right? He performs such intense worship, such mode of ignorant worship to Lord Shiva 
What was he doing? He was cutting off his flesh and entering it into the fire and performing this austerity to please Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva wasn't coming. And so finally he was ready to chop off his head and put it into the fire. And so Lord Shiva appeared before him and said, please take any benediction that you like. And he said, I wish that I have the ability that I can touch someone's head and their head will explode. To toss to Lord Shiva said, so be it. And then he immediately thought, I could touch Lord Shiva's head and I can take his wife Parvati. And so he started chasing Lord Shiva around the universe. And so finally he, Lord Shiva, he came to the lotus feet of Krishna who took the form of a brahmachari. And he went to Rikasura and said, you're worshiping Lord Shiva, but how do you know he told you the truth? How do you know that you can actually perform this benediction that he gave you? And he said, you should actually just try touching your head. And so Rikasura touched his own head and his head exploded. So dull headed, these <laughs> certain personalities that worship Lord Shiva are the Buddha dull headed. And in the purport, it talks about how, uh, oh no, in the, in, the, in, in the actual translation, it says Kapala in pot of skulls, Kshata Jaasavam, they, uh, they drink uh, blood out of a uh, pot of made, of made of skulls. So there's actually the Agora. Has anybody heard of the Agora sadhus? You've heard? Agora? You've heard about the Agora the Agori? There are certain sadhus in India. They take a vow that for 12 years, they'll actually only eat and drink out of a human skull. And they're called the Agori, and they're very kind of considered sadhus, but very dark, dark worship. So we don't want to get drawn into this mode of ignorance of this type of worship. But in Srila Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there's a verse that's from Bhukti Mukti Spriha Yavat Pasachi Hridi Vartite Tavad Bhakti Sukasyatra Ketam Abhuya Dayobhavi. The material desire to enjoy the material world and the desire to become liberated from material bondage are considered to be two witches, pasachis, and they haunt one like ghosts. As long as these witches remain within the heart, how can one feel transcendental bliss? As long as these two witches remain in the heart, there is no possibility of enjoying the transcendental bliss of devotional service. So we can then transfer over to understand how material desires and even the desire to become liberated are like pisachis. So what to speak of actual witches and ghosts? We have witches in our own heart that haunt us like ghosts and we can become ghostly by trying to attach ourselves to material enjoyment of this world. And even Srila Raghunath Das Goswami says that talk about liberation is like a tigress that completely devours us in Manashiksha. So hearing about how one can be haunted by ghosts, pisachis, the great acharyas, they're actually like exorcists that remove all of these pisachis and ghosts from our hearts. Even uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the Antialila, where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he goes to, uh, he goes into great ecstasy and he, in Jagannath Puri, he falls into the ocean. And then a fisherman 
he's fishing at night and he catches Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his nets and seeing this person, he thinks he's seeing a ghost and he starts chanting the Nasringa, uh, the, uh, the Nasringa song and he just experiences ecstasy. The ghost isn't leaving him. He's just experiencing ecstasy and ecstasy. And so this fisherman, he releases his nets and he goes to the shore and he's in ecstasy, but he's bewildered. He's seen a ghost. And Sarup Damodar Goswami and the others, they're trying to find Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they see this fisherman, Sarup Damodar Goswami comes up to him and he says, what have, what have you seen? He says, I saw a ghost. I've never, I've never seen a person like this before. He was so pale. He, he seen, he, he was chanting a gong, gong sound. And every time I chanted my Nisringa mantra, I, I just, I just went into ecstasy. It, it seemed like he was haunting me even more. <laughs> and Srupa Damodar Goswami said, don't worry, I'm a great exorcist and slapped him in the face. <laughs> So, Sarup Damodar Goswami is the leader of the Gaudiya Vaishnav, so we can also become exorcists <laughs> and help people come out of this darkness that they're in because of being haunted by these Pisachis, these two witches, Bukti Mukti Sprihi, Sprihi, Spriha Yava. And so this takes us to how our great Acharyas they're always wanting to deliver personalities from the mode of darkness, the mode of ignorance, and bring them to the transcendental platform. And today is the Tirubhav Mahotsava, the disappearance day of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji. Gauravir Bhava Bhumes Tvam, Nirdeshta Sajana Priya, Vaishnava Sarvabhoma, Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha. Uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji, he is the great general of the Vaishnavas. And Gauravir Bhava, Bhumesram, he's the one who actually helped Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur realize the actual Mayapur, the place, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, birthplace. And so, so the Jagannath Das Babaji, he was born around 1780. And Shri uh, Baladev Vidyabhushana had a disciple named Uddhava. Who, and Uddhava Das Babaji had a disciple named Mukunda. And Mukunda Das Babaji was the um, uh, Babaji Avesh Guru of Shri the Jagannath Das Babaji. And not much is known about his early life, but he became a quite prominent personality in Vrindavan. Many, many Vaishnavs were surrendered unto Jagannath Das Babaji. There's even one story that in Vrindavan, there was a great uh, Bhagavat reciter he would make money off of reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. And none of the Vaishnavas would go to hear him because Jagannath Das Babaji wouldn't go. And Jagannath Das Babaji, he actually went to this person and said that you're making money off of reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. And because of this, it's not pure. You might be saying the words of the Srimad Bhagavatam, but it has no power. And this personality, he actually surrendered unto Srila Jagannath Das Babaji and eventually became a renounced Vaishnav and became a disciple of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji. And also um, in Vrindavan, one time Srila Jagannath Das Babaji, he was offered some bread, some roti by a street sweeper. And he took it and he ate it with great pleasure. But some personalities, they saw this and started criticizing him. How can you take from a low-class person, street sweeper? You should be taking 
your prasadam from those who are in the Brahmin caste or at least higher castes. And he revealed to them that actually all the street sweepers in Vrindavan, 88,000 personalities from Vrindavan have come to, uh, I'm sorry, 88,000 great rishis have come to Vrindavan to just immerse themselves in the dust of Raj and become street sweepers. So these are not regular personalities. So he revealed how great the dust of Vrindavan is. And so in Vrindavan, he was very much absorbed in chanting the holy names. And he stayed there for some time. And in 1880, so if he was born in 1780, in 1880, he met Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur met him. And they performed Harinam at 8 a.m. in the morning. They would go out for Harinam. So Jagannath Das Babaji was 100 years old at this time, going out on Harinam. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that even though he was 100, he danced and roared like a lion in Harinam. And he would chant this verse in between um, the Harinam. He would say, Nitai ki nama eneche re, nama eneche namera hate, shradhara mule nama di teche re. What divine name is this that Nitai has brought? He has brought the name to the marketplace and is selling it for the price of faith, which we then meditate on how Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur then later wrote the marketplace of the holy name, how very much he's inspired by Srila Jagannath Das Babaji. And Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he took shelter, shiksha of Shri Jagannath Das Babaji. And Shri Jagannath Das Babaji, even though he's so old, he became so old that he could barely walk, but he could see if he lifted his eyelids because his eyelids would droop over his eyes. And so the only way he could see is he had to hold up his eyelids when he was looking at the devotees. And so he had one disciple, Bihari Das Babaji, who would actually carry him in a basket to different places. And, uh, Bahari would serve him in so many different ways. One time it stated that Srila Jagannath Das Babaji, he was eating a prasadam. He was taking prasadam in Navadweep and these uh, puppies all came to take prasadam from his plate. And he just let them eat off of his own plate while he was eating because he considered that these puppies were actually residents of Navadweep. He was seeing a deeper reality than he could see. And uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur brought Srila Jagannath Das Babaji to Mayapur, where Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was trying to reestablish the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It had somehow been transported uh, Navadweep had been uh, transported to uh, across the river, and so Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, using Bhakti Ratnakar, very ancient maps, was actually showing how Mayapur, Navadweep, was actually on the other side of the river. And he wanted to reveal the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so Shri Jagannath Das Babaji was brought by Bihari Das Babaji to Srivas Angan, where Shiva Jagannath Das Babaji jumped out of the basket and started dancing like a madman, revealing that this was actually Srivas Angan. This was actually the holy place. So Gora Avir Bhava Bhumes Twam, revealing the great holy place of Mayapur. And at, at this time, around this time, he also met 12-year-old Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, who was already very proficient in astronomy and astrology. And he 
told 12 year old Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, please make a Vaishnav calendar of all the appearance and disappearance days of the great Vaishnavs and Vaishnavis. He actually gave certain direction to certain appearance days and disappearance days. So it's actually stated that he was the one who told Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur the appearance day of Sri Vishnu Priya Devi before it hadn't actually been known. And so actually uh, finding out the uh, actual appearance day of Vishnu Priya Devi, this was also the day that Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur reestablished the Vishva Vaishnava Raja Sabha, the great uh, community of Vaishnavas. And so Srila Jagannath Das Babaji uh, stated by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur that he passed away in 1895. So he lived to be around 115 years old and gave so much mercy to the devotees. He's Sarva Boma, he's the great general. And so we, on this day, sincerely beg the blessings of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji that he'll remove our ghosts and witches of material enjoyment and even the desire for liberation from, from this material world that are in our heart. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he states that the great Vaishnavas, the great Acharyas, they're always with us. They're always around. He says that they're not like shooting stars that appear and then are gone, but they're actually like the sun and moon. They're actually always there to give us shelter if we sincerely try to please them by living sincerely. And it's stated that he is Rasika Manjari and in Goloka Vrindavan. And today is also the disappearance day of Rasika Nanda who's a great acharya and disciple of Shamananda Pandit. And it's getting a little late, but one amazing pastime, actually two amazing pastimes of Rasikananda, is that one day he was, he was crying for a guru. And he was sincerely crying out for guru. And this is a very important point. That sometimes uh, we want a spiritual master and we're thinking, oh, maybe this person, this person, this person. But Srila Guru Govinda Maharaj, he actually stated one time that if one is really sincere and wanting to find a guru, then they'll cry day and night. You'll even go to bed with tears in your eyes, praying, please, Please, Krishna, give me a guru. Please give me a spiritual master. And so Rasika, Rasika Nanda, he was praying in this way, day and night. Please reveal a spiritual master to me. And he sat in meditation. And so when he was sitting in meditation, there was a loud voice that said, your spiritual master is Shamananda Pandit. He didn't get a text message. He didn't get anything from Messenger. He didn't see anything on social media, but he heard this deep voice saying, your spiritual master is Shamananda Pandit. And he was so happy, so elated that he searched out Shamananda Pandit and took shelter of Shamananda Pandit, who is great Acharya, who is with Narutam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya in Vrindavan with Shri Jiva Goswami, and then were the fir first book distributors. And it's a very special teaching about crying out for a spiritual master, not to take it lightly. And then another most famous pastime with Rasikananda is that there was an angry Muslim who wanted to stop the preaching of Rasikananda because after taking shelter of Shamananda Pandit, he became such a powerful preacher. He was delivering so many people 
from ghosts and witches. And he became such a powerful preacher that what happens when you become a powerful preacher? You're going to have some opposition in this world. And this envious Muslim, he sent this elephant out that was a wild elephant to crush Rasikananda. And this elephant was coming at Rasikananda and Rasikananda started chanting the holy names and he actually converted the elephant into his own disciple. And we hear about this with some great personalities, right? St. Francis of Assisi, there was this wolf that was coming and attacking different persons in a village. And St. Francis of Assisi actually converted the wolf into his own disciple. So Rasikananda, he actually uh, transformed this elephant into a, into a great devotee. And it stated that Rasikananda disappeared in this world in 1652 when he visited Shirachor Gopinath. So the great deity that uh, Shri Madhavendra Puri, um, the deity of Gopinath, the Shirachor means the thief who stole sweet rice for Madhavendra Puri. This great deity, Rasikananda, went to the temple, had darshan of Shirachor Gopinath, and then he entered into the deity and disappeared. And this is how he left the world. So, Rasikananda Prabhu Ki Jai. We sincerely pray to these great Vaishnava Acharyas that we can take shelter of the holy name and sincerely live by their example and try to help others also take to the chanting of the holy names, which will cheto darpana marjanam, cleanse the mirror of the heart of these bukti mukti spriha yava and sincerely serve Srila Prabhupada. So stop here if there's any comments or questions. Samyapras Prabhu. I was just appreciating how um, I was appreciating the the uh, the nature of these acharyas that how seminal they are how much they inspire other acharyas they create traditions by the force of their own bhakti you know Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj chanting a mantra in kirtan becomes Bhakti No Thakur's um, bhajan about Nityananda and the mark of the holy name if you were 2020 to Denver were, were reciting these mantras mm. basically because one sadhu in Vrindavan and Mayapur is so is like speaking this, this pure Krishna mm. conscious realization and uh, we also understand that the mantra Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Vaita Gadadha Shri Vasa Gaur Bhakti Vrinda was composed by Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in that form which is like our second Maha Mantra Prabhupada says <laughs> and um, I remember being at his uh Samadhi Mandir in Mayapur or oh. Navadri Island. And we'll sure. I remember being at his Samadhi Mandir in, uh, in Navadri and with Agur Maharaj, Vaishishma mm -hmm. Prabhu, and we were appreciating Babaji Maharaj. And one of the famous uh, instructions he gave was to stay steady in your service, even at the cost of your own life. Mm -hmm. So this is this kind of, I mean, 100, what, 15 years of on the planet. <laughs> So that was his realization. Stay steady at the cost of your own life. So if anybody wants inspiration, steadiness, mm. he's a great acharya for that. Mm. And sought him on our service. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he had very uh, strict sadhana. It's actually stated. Um, and it kind of goes along with this verse today that he would chant from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then 11 uh, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. And he said, nobody should sleep during these times. Otherwise, Lord Shiva will come with his ghosts and give you bad dreams. So. <laughs> Any other? Sleep <laughs> 
Any other comments or questions? Thanks so much. So when we we're reading about Lord Shiva in the Bhagavatam, is that Guna Avatar Lord Shiva? When we say he's the greatest Vaishnav, is that who that is in Ganesh, the expansion of Sada Shiva? Just like when we think about Krishna and Vrindavan and Krishna killing the demons, or, oh, we say, oh, okay, that's possibly Krishna. So we make a distinction. Can you say something about that? In the different pastimes in the Bhagavatam of Lord Shiva? Yeah. Um, depends on different pastimes that are stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. And especially with Rudra, we hear about Rudra in the fifth canto where Rudra actually comes out from Anantashesh and there's 11 different Rudras which then destroy the cosmos. And so it's, we have to hear from the Acharyas and about different pastimes with Lord Shiva to actually ascertain which incarnation is, is which. Because Sadashiva is in his own Vaikuntha planet. He's the original. So Sada means eternal. So he's the eternal Lord Shiva. But when he comes down into the material world, then there's different incarnations. So we hear about Shambhu in Brahma Samhita on how he is, him and Parvati are like the father and mother of the material world, these bodies, we can actually thank them for the, uh, as Brahma Sanghita says, the Yoni and the Linga, they're creating this material world. And so, yeah, it's in different incarnations, we have to actually um, try to yeah, ascertain which incarnation is, uh, is, 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 uh, coming from Sadashiva in that particular pastime. Uh, and especially how Lord Shiva, he performs so many different pastimes. It's quite amazing. Yeah. So with Daksha, with Daksha in the material world, Lord Shiva is the Gunavatar. So Sadashiva being Lord Vishnu, and then as he comes into the material world as the Guna avatar, he mixes with Maya. So he's, you know, his own tattva. So with Daksha, he is the Guna avatar, uh, Shiva. He, he's not Sadashiva. But he's also not, in that pastime, he's not Rudra, and he's, he's not a uh, further expansion, but he's Lord Shiva Guna avatar himself which is a very important pastime because then sati uh, is, gives way to parvati and there's so many pastimes there. So yeah, guna avatar, Lord Shiva. But then we see how Advaita Acharya being Sada Shiva and he even takes on uh, various moods of Lord Shiva like Gopeshwar Mahadev, which is very, profound understanding of Lord Shiva, that Gopeshwar Mahadev, he's actually the protector of the holy Dhams, he's the protector of the Ras Lila. So in that way, he's actually the original Lord Shiva, like when we see Gopeshwar Mahadev. Lord Uh, yeah, in, in Vrindavan Leela, it's uh, when in Gorgona Desh Dipika, uh, Sadashiva has a cowherd boy form. Does any, uh, it starts with a K. It's like, um, I, I, I forget the, I, for, I forget the, what is it? That's, that's another name of Madhu Mangala. Yeah, I, I forget the name. 
that's there, but he's a cowherd boy. And then he's also a gopesh for Mahadev. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, there's actually, uh, there's actually a pastime where Lord Shiva, he becomes a young gopi and he's dressed as a, he's got a half moon, dreadlocks, and he's the small gopi and he goes to the Ras Lila and Shumati Radharani and the other gopis are, who is this, who is this new gopi? How does she have dreadlocks? She has a half moon on her head. Who is this? And she, they're kind of teasing her a little bit and Krishna comes and says, this is a Gopeshwar. She's actually the uh, kind of protector and lord of the gopis. <laughs> so, yeah, very special. And then, in, I mean, even when we get into Brihat Bhagavatamrita, I think it's, uh, you know, Lord Shiva. Uh, I mean, yeah, just, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's even more exciting. <laughs> he's, he's performing Harinam through the Brahma Jyoti. <laughs> Lord Shiva's on Harinam in the, in the Brahma Jyoti. And anybody who's in the Brahma Jyoti, they take part of that Harinam, they get liberated from the Brahma Jyoti. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Is there anything online? Oh, in the chat. Oh. Vijay Krishna Prabhu wrote the highlights. One, Putana is a witch who moves around by the use of black art related to mounting small flying trees too. It's quite sad to see that in our present day, young people are being led to adopt the worship black art and in this way ruin their lives. Three, Lord Shiva gave the exploding of the head's benediction. The demon tried to explode Shiva's head in order to gain the favor of Shiva's wife. However, because of not being certain of the power of the benediction, someone more intelligent than him, Lord Brahma convinced him to try to explode his own head. He tried and he died and Lord Shiva was saved from being exploded by one of his most faithful followers. And then Jagannath Das Babaji's biography, one he lived for 144 years. He was one of the Shiksha Gurus of Bhakti Vinod. Bhakti Vinod gave him a name to him, the chief of the Vaishnavas. His deity was Sri Giriraj Govardhan. Although he could barely walk whenever there was Nam Kirtan, he would bolt out of his basket and leap four feet into the air. He was always enthusiastic to serve the Vaishnavas. To confirm the appearance place of Chaitanya, Bhakti Vinod took the help of Das Babaji, one of his instructions to his disciples, you must avoid women, men who associate with women or with a man who in any way associates with a man who associates with a woman. Uh, and I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, uh, uh, I know our time is already uh, done. Uh, my question is a very quick one. Why is it that Srila Prabhupada, in the purport to the verse you chose for today, uh, categorizes uh, beverages made of blood as most abominable? That is my question. So why is it that uh, blood is ca categorized as most abominable is because generally flesh and fermented blood is abominable because it's in the mode of ignorance. Um, anybody who eats flesh and I'm not, I'm not sure about fermented blood. Does anybody know why fermented blood is stated? Yeah. I'm just, I just, out of curiosity, I looked it up and I've never seen it. Uh -huh. uh, apparently, it actually, the phenomenon takes place in uh, medical centers. And the blood's in, in vials that exist in the world and actually ferment from the small amount of uh, glucose. Um, and I, I mean, to me, it just seems like anything else in the world of ignorance, you can tell something in the world of ignorance because normal people think it's, uh, when somebody who's in a, in, a, in a fresh, clean state of consciousness, they're, they're generally repulsed by it, mm. right? Uh, even, uh, even children are repulsed by, by 
by sex, right? Because they're in a clean, fresh state of consciousness. So anybody who has a, a fresh, clean state of consciousness, repulsed by certain things, blood, you know, mucus, even just like you know, all sorts of things dealing with the body. And they and then the idea of eating those things will completely just like disturb individuals who, who are more in a suffix state um, or in just a clean state of mind. And so I think that that's it's kind of you can determine what's in the mode of ignorance to some degree just by seeing what is normally repulsive to a mentally and physically healthy human being. Um, and then you can see that there's human beings who still indulge in those things. It doesn't mean that it's, it's not a mode of ignorance anymore. It means that those people have degraded themselves so much that they, they uh, just like the, that they could probably take birth as a hog in the next life and join school. Because a living entity has that capacity to enjoy the most disgusting things. But it requires degradation to do that. You can't do that without becoming degraded first. Did you hear that, Vijay Krishna Prabhu? No, uh, yes, I heard, but I need you to repeat the answer, please. So, <laughs> so in short, Nagar Kirtan Prabhu was saying how, uh, yeah, it's, it's repulsive and abominable to um, kind of natural human being in, in, in short ways. So, you know, when we see the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, uh, Bhagavad Gita tells us, you know, that which is good for the human beings and that which is actually most abominable and will drag us down to the lower modes of ignorance. Yes, and Samir Prasprabhu has something to say. One way to understand also uh, why, for a materialist, they can appreciate why flesh and blood are the mode of ignorance. Uh, in terms of hygiene, in terms of public health, as soon as you have blood sitting around, you spread disease, flesh spreads disease. Um, a lot of the uh, bacterial outbreaks, a lot of problems, massive problems, including viral outbreaks based out of uh, Asian uh, wet markets. Basically, you're dealing with um, confined animals that die, they're killed, they stay with other animals, there's too much proximity, the flesh is a carrier for disease. You get like E. coli outbreaks, water is, is disturbed, soil is disturbed, even in, in America because of E. coli. Um, as soon as you have the effluence from an animal, as soon as you have the blood, or, or it, it just, it's a terrible idea from a public health perspective. Even if they don't have faith in Shastra or the modes of nature, they should be able to appreciate that biologically it's, a, it's just a terrible idea. Hmm. And flesh and blood are, are absolutely number one um, spreaders of disease. The Black Plague, rats, I mean, it's just example after example. They're just unclean. They carry bacteria, as well as they degrade your consciousness in more subtle ways. So, Jay. Yes. Uh, so if I may, Bal Prabhu, uh, I got the answer uh, uh, repeated by you from Nagara Prabhu. Thank you very much, Nagara Prabhu. Shamia Pras Prabhu also wonderful contribution in relation to my question and um uh, Bal Prabhu, thank you very much for your uh, kindness Hare krishna Hare krishna grantara shima bhagavatam ki jai tirava mahotsava shiva jagannatha spadaji maharaj ki jai Tanda Prabhu ki jai jai kalpa trubhya sta kripa sindhi vacha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishna vidyo vaishna vidyo namanamaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Bal Prabhu ki jai wonderful class thank you very much